Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Anyway, here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That will tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. Preparation for our landing. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. I said don't come near me. No, 
minute, don't! <gasps> Stay back, you hear me? Stay back! <laughs> Bonjour, vous êtes... I mean... Are you Nancy? Uh, yeah? I'm Heather McKay. Welcome! I'm so glad you're here. How was your flight? Uh, fine. Well, actually, they lost my suitcase, so I don't have any clothes or my cell phone. What's going on in there? Is someone hurt? That's just Minette throwing one of her tantrums. Don't worry. She'll stop screaming right now. <laughs> they lost your suitcase? That's terrible! Well, at least you're staying with Jing Jing. She'll have tons of clothes you can borrow. Is she all right? Oh, you mean Minette? Don't worry, she's fine. At least she will be after phase three, which should begin right about now. See, she uses this process that some shrink taught her to manage anger and frustration. First, she vents her rage for 10 seconds, then six seconds of sobs and tears, and finally, at least four seconds of robust laughter, all of which restores her positive flux. Huh? It's all very weird, but it works, and believe me, without it, she would be impossible to work for. With it, she's a mere nightmare to work for. Anyway, ready to get started? You bet. That desk over there will be your workstation. I made a list of all the things that need to get done and put them on your computer. That's a Metro Pass. It'll let you ride the subway all over the city for free. Go ahead and take it. Answering the phone is your job. If you have any questions, just ask. Ask me, that is. Do not bother Manette. She's behind on her spring collection and is in danger of falling way behind on her couture projects. Why is she so far behind? She's been under a lot of stress lately. Heather? Yes? I hear voices. Who are you talking to out there? Nancy Drew. You know, from the States? Well, she's no good to me out there. Send her in. Yes, Manette. As soon as you feel up to it, she's right through that door. What do you mean by couture? High fashion dresses and accessories that people have commissioned Manette to create. Needless to say, those people are très riche, in fact. She's designing the dress the First Lady will wear to the World Summit in November. Pretty cool, huh? Talk to you later. Allez, bye-bye. Familiar. why those doodles look familiar. Sunny June did them. He must have been Minette's last assistant. Wow, that guy gets around. Pick up envelope from J.J. Ling. Pick up fabric photos from Peter von Schwesterkrank. Deliver photos to John Mitchell Traquenard Fix Plotter. <laughs> do whatever Minette tells you to do and do it fast.
What's this? That's the plotter. It's broken. Fixing it is one of your jobs. Minette's House of Design. Bonjour. My name is Lynn Manrique. I'm with the Modern History Department at UC Kearns in the States, and I'm following up on the letter I sent to Minette about two weeks ago concerning Noisette Tornade. Noisette Tornade? It's that historian person, isn't it? Tell her we're sorry, but Minette is extremely busy and won't be able to get back to her for at least six weeks. I'm sorry, but... I heard. Well, six weeks it is, then. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> Well, there you are. I was just about to call Amy Grunhild and tell her that this internship thing she'd arranged for you was off. It's bad enough, Amy, foisting you on me like this. The day I become financially independent and can tell people like her to buzz off will be the happiest day of my life. Well, you're here, we've met, so get to work. Heather did give you a list of chores, right? Yes, I'm all set. One more thing. See that form over there? The one I've just started to drape? Don't touch it. Don't even go near it. That's the dress I'm designing for the First Lady. Now go. Actually, make me a pot of my special tea first. It was custom blended by my tea therapist, so make sure you follow the directions. When you're done, pour me a cup and leave it on the table. A nice big boost of herbal energy never fails to get my brain cells firing. Let's see, to make Minette her tea, the first thing I should do is read these instructions. Then I should put whichever herbs the instructions say I need into this pot of boiling water. Then when I'm done, I should click on the teapot so I can pour the tea into a cup. If I make a mistake and need to throw out an herb that I chose, or the tea itself, all I have to do is click on the sink. Okay, I think I'm ready. If Minette has had a temper tantrum in the last 14 days, and if she declares that blue is her favorite color on the table... Excuse me, Minette, but what's your favorite color? Red. When asked to pick a number between 1 and 10, if Minette chooses an odd number on the day the tea is to be consumed... Minette, could you please pick a number between 1 and 10? 10. 10. Done. I finished making your tea. Just leave it there.
Oh, so rude, Minette. What happened to your wall? You're not really talking to me while I'm trying to work, are you? <laughs> Sorry. Nancy, come back here. The tea is utterly rude. I can already feel my creativity flowing again, building like a wave on the ocean, surging towards some unseen shore. I have another job for you, a very critical job. See the stuff that I've been studying? That, in essence, is my spring collection. Uh-huh. All those objects have certain things in common which speak to and stimulate the artistic sinews of my subconscious, from which all the designs I need will eventually burst forth. Uh-huh. They're all totally rude, but they're not enough. I need more, Nancy. You need to take the number 7 metro to Pont Neuf, go to the flea market in Square de Vergalant Park, and buy me four more things with qualities identical to the ones each of these possesses. Use this bag. Put everything in there as soon as you buy it. I don't want anyone seeing what you bring me. It could give away my whole collection. Here's some money. But I'm not sure what you want. Stuff. I want... stuff. New stuff that's just like this old stuff, only... different. Now just take a good look at my stuff, then go. Go! There's something on the floor here. Looks like someone slipped it under the door. It's for Minette. Go ahead and open it. Make the most of what little time you have left. Soon it will all be over. Oh no, not another one. Minette's gotten other letters like this? Letters, phone calls. They started sometime in April, then they stopped, then they started up again in July. And last month, someone sent Minette dead flowers every day for a week. She locks the letters up in her dodo box over there in order to neutralize them. May I keep this letter? Why? I mean, if you were some kind of private detective, I'd say sure, but since you're not, just put it in the dodo box. But I, I mean, uh, <sighs> okay. How do you open this thing? You don't. There's a lock on it, but Minette is convinced that if she opens it, all the wickedness in there will escape and wreak havoc. In fact, don't say anything to her about that letter. It'll just upset her, and if she falls any further behind, she'll have to cancel her show next month. And if that happens, she may as well cancel her career. Has this windmill or moulin always been a fashion design studio? No. In fact, until a year or two ago, this little old lady lived here. When she passed away, this place went on the market and Minette snapped it up. See, Minette has this thing about curves. She claimed working in a quasi-round environment like this would make her more productive. It makes her seem very eccentric. Seem eccentric? The woman wears a mask. She is eccentric. And fashion editors eat it up. In fact, if there's one thing I've learned from Minette, it's that how a designer behaves is likely to get her just as much attention in the fashion world as what she designs. Why does Minette wear that mask? All I know is that back in March, on the last day of her big fall show, she showed up wearing that mask and she hasn't taken it off since. You didn't know she was going to do that? No, no one did. Not even Dieter. That was her boyfriend at the time. Dieter von Schwesterkronk, the fashion photographer. Who is Dieter von Schwesterkronk? He's this awesome fashion photographer. But listen, as it turns out, I have to run an errand in that area, so I'll pick up those fabric photos. Oh no, that's okay, I'll do it. Finding his studio will help me get more familiar with Paris. In fact, why don't I run your errand too? No, that's all right. It, uh, it can wait. Getting those prints to jean Me is much more important. Why is that? Jean-Michel Trequenard is the fashion editor for Glam Glam magazine. All he really is is a glorified gossip columnist, so it pays to be nice to him. Which, as you'll find out, ain't easy. His office is the Café Kiki on the Rue des Mauvais Garçons in the Marais. Look for the bald guy at the corner table. He'll have a cell phone in one hand and a fork in the other. What's with all the red paint that's splattered on the wall in Minette's studio? I came in one morning last month, and there it was. Minette must have had a bad night. 
And she just happened to have a can of paint in her office? Probably using it for inspiration. Ah, well, I'll see you later. Whenever you have questions, just ask. To the memory of the French fighters. Bonjour. Lequel préférez-vous? Parlez-vous anglais? If you buy, I speak whatever you like. I see you over there at the monument with the Cross of Lorraine. You are a tourist? Actually, I have a job here in Paris, but it's only temporary, so I guess I'm kind of a tourist. Tourists are good. I welcome tourists. I am Malika. I sell fine things from around the world. The others who sell here, they sell things which they pry from the muck of their basements. You see something you like? Well... How much are you selling the green rings for? They are green magic rings. They cost 15 euros. Too much. Four euros is more like it. Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you come back, maybe then I have what you like. I'll remember that. Merci. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. If you like the bargains, you have come to the right place. What captures the eyes? Well, what's the price of this lava lamp? That lamp is very special. The truck which rises and falls inside it, unlike any I have ever seen. Watching it will entertain you for hours, and I am selling it for only 20 euro. Would you take 15 euros instead? It is yours. See anything else you like? Does this cost very much? The traffic cone is one of my favorites. So colorful and so useful. With it, I myself learn to park my car parallel. And I ask only 10 euro for it. It's just a little cone. One euro. It is yours. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't see anything else. Here, new things come and old things go all the time. You must come back. I might just do that. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Monsieur Marchand, à votre service. Bonjour, monsieur Marchand. American tourist? Sort of. Is that okay? I like Americans. They are smart. I save good stuff and they can tell. So, what are you going to buy? Well, what's in here? A movie? Oui, it contains an American short film. I am not sure if it is about a beloved beast of burden in Tibet or about someone who talks a lot, but it has won many awards. And the fact that it is in a nice blue canister makes it well worth 84 euro. Would you take 21 euros instead? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. By any chance, does uh, Mademoiselle wish to earn some money? Maybe. How? The tourists, uh, they like to buy hand-painted reproductions of famous works of art. But as you can see, it is difficult for me to paint them. But for a young woman such as you, it is easy. You want me to paint the reproductions? You see? The lines are already there. You look at the original painting, you put paint on your brush, you paint between the lines. Voila! A painting which the tourists will gobble up. And I pay you 15 euro for each one you complete. Do you wish to start now? If you don't mind. But of course.
Monsieur, how's this? Magnifique! You have done excellent work. And for that, I reward you. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Come in, set your things down, and come on over here. Hi, JJ Ling. I shake your hand, but I get flour all over you. Oh, and Heather called and told me about your luggage? No worries. I have plenty of clothes in every size imaginable. Your bedroom's down that hall. The airline lost my luggage once, told me it was gone for good and paid me $100. Then five years later, my suitcase shows up on my doorstep. And a bill for the $100 they'd paid me. Plus interest. Oh my gosh, really? What? You don't believe me? Of course I do. The worst part was I had to toss out almost everything that was in it. Clothes, makeup. I mean, the stuff was five years old, right? You like chocolate chip cookies? I love chocolate chip cookies. So do I. And the nice thing is, I'm about three pounds shy of being the perfect size 12 that I need to be for Minette. I have a very high metabolism. So, I make cookies, I eat cookies, and since you're here, I share cookies. Why does Manette want you to be a size 12? Contractually, I have to be a size 12. See, Manette is into curves, so she designs clothes for full-figured curvy women. Because I signed on to be a fitting model, I have to maintain the ideal size 12 weight and shape. What's a fitting model? A fitting model puts on samples from a designer's latest line, so the designer can create each piece on a real live person instead of a dress form. It's not very exciting. In fact, it's totally boring. Plus, you're always getting stabbed with pins. But it pays the bills. Does anyone else live here? Nope. It's just me. And you now. Managed to get a short-term lease. Soon as I'm done being Minette's fitting model, I am out of here. Can you think of anyone who might be out to get Minette? Well, Dieter, obviously. Dieter von Schwesterkrank? He and Minette went out for about six months. Then all of a sudden, last April, Minette dumped him. Just tossed him aside like last month's edition of Vogue. Do you know why she broke it off? No idea. Although I suspect it has something to do with the fact that Dieter lets his pet boa constrictor run loose in that photographic studio of his. He has a pet boa constrictor? That's what I said. Don't you believe me? Well, I... I guess. Hardly anybody knows about it. I think it may be illegal. If you happen to be in there, be careful. Heather wants me to pick up an envelope from you? Oh yeah, it's right over there. Heather needed a bunch of personal information so they can pay me, but I refuse to give it out over the phone. I'm real paranoid about that sort of stuff. Don't ask me why, I just am. Go ahead and take it to her. I'll be back in a bit. Okay! you work for Manette because you want to be a fashion designer too? Well, I studied at Rhode Island School of Design and Central St. Martin's in London, so I kind of like to think that I already am a fashion designer. 
I work for Manette mostly so I can develop some contacts and get a feel for the business end of things. I'd love to see some of the things you've designed. Well, I'd love to show them to you. Heather, my pencil's missing. It was right here and now it's gone. You walked off with it again. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I'm telling you, it's not here. Did you check behind your ear? Oh. My portfolio can wait. If she came out and caught me showing you my designs instead of hers, yikes. Here's that envelope I picked up from JJ. I almost forgot. No problem. Talk to you later. Allez, bye bye. If you need to talk to Minette, good luck. She's playing that ridiculous online game she's obsessed with and refuses to do anything else until she gets the highest score. It is so aggravating. to know what Manette's login is? I'm afraid I have no idea. I'm in. Game on. Right. I got the highest score. Or should I say Carol did? Oh my gosh, I did it. Heather, I won. I got the highest score. Send Nancy in here. We've got work to do. And I am on a roll. You're a genius. Now get in there before she decides she has to beat that score. Get Ah, you have some stuff for me. Let's see it. How absolutely positively rude. The lava lamp, the rings, the canister, the cone. They're perfect. I adore them all. Now go away, I have work to do. No, no, don't say anything. Let me guess. You lost your passport, so you're looking for the American consulate to get it replaced. Only you wound up here because you asked a Parisian for directions, and you thought you understood what he said. Only you did it. Am I right? Actually, I'm looking for Dieter von Schwesterkrank. Dieter von Schwesterkrank. 
Please don't tell me you're a would-be model who thinks her career would take off if only I would photograph her. No, my name's Nancy Drew. Minette sent me here to pick up some fabric photos. Ah, I regret to say I have not printed them up yet, nor will I have time to do so for quite a while. Had I used my digital cameras, there would be no problem, but unfortunately, the essence of those fabrics was better captured by film. But I need to deliver them to that fashion editor, Jean-Michel Traquenard, today. My regrets once again. Do you know how to make prints? Uh, sure. Then all is well. There is a binder on the bookshelf that will tell you how to make prints with the paper I use, which is Krollmeister Eskachrom PB paper. The dark room is through the door with the red light by it, and the four negatives from which prints need to be made are next to the enlarger. I'm sure you'll do fine. Enlarger, negatives, developer, stop map, mixer. May I take this binder into the dark room with me? Leave it in here, please. If you take it in there, you might spill something on it. What's this? That's just a toy I made when I was a boy. Go ahead and play with it if you want. I still do. Nice camera. Is it digital? Yes. Very high res, though. Very limited capacity. Would you like to borrow it? I'd love to. Thank you. You're welcome. Just make sure you don't knock over anything in there. Some of those chemicals are extremely volatile. Help yourself! Whoa, look at all those bottles of chemicals. One false move and boom. Oh my gosh, it's pitch black in here. With all those chemicals around, I'm going to have to be real careful. you made the prints. Now you get to have the pleasure of delivering them to Monsieur Treco now. It sounds like you don't like him. He's a conceited nixnuts who thinks far too highly of himself and far too little of everyone else to do his job fairly. What kind of dealings have you had with him? Unhappy. I refuse to bow and scrape when I'm in his presence and he resents me for it. He's not used to that. You see, most people are so afraid he'll write something bad about them that as far as they're concerned, whatever Jean Me wants, Jean Me gets, no questions asked. Why does Jean Me need those prints? Heather said that he wants to use them to illustrate an upcoming story about modern fabrics. What's your opinion of Minette's assistant, Heather McKay? Heather's a bright girl. Her crush on me is unfortunate, but I can handle it. She has a crush on you? It's obvious to me that she does. Dealing with models the way I do day in and day out, I've gotten pretty good at knowing what women are thinking and feeling. Does Heather know that you know? I've said nothing to her because although there is no chance that I will ever reciprocate her feelings, I see no point in hurting her. Let her have her crush. Eventually she will set her heart on someone else and I will be forgotten. I hear that you used to date Minette. That is correct. But you're not dating her now? No. Because... You'd have to ask her. She broke up with me by leaving a message on my cell phone. 
and she hasn't said a word to me since. It was an unforgivable outrage. I don't claim to be a paragon of virtue, but even I didn't deserve that. Is it true that you keep a pet boa constrictor in here? Don't be ridiculous. I would never keep an exotic pet like that in here. Although I may have lost an exotic pet like that in here once. You mean there is a snake in here somewhere? I'm sure it's found its way out by now. They get pretty active when they're hungry, you know, and I haven't seen it for months. But, uh, just in case, watch where you step. How well do you know J.J. Ling? As well as I care to. The way she's always pulling out that annoying word game and begging people to play. And did you know that she won a lottery back in the States? That's right, she's actually filthy rich. What kind of person models when she's filthy rich? There's something not quite right about that girl. You've had no contact at all with Minette since she broke it off? None. All my dealings with her now are strictly professional, with Heather handling any and all communication between us. Have you tried communicating with her anonymously? Are you accusing me of something? No, I'm just curious. Curiosity is not necessarily a good thing, Fräulein. I'd try to remember that if I were you. Thanks for your help. Adios. Excusez-moi, mais êtes-vous Monsieur Traquenard? Please, in English. I do not wish to hear my native tongue butchered while I eat. As for my name, pff, not Traquenard. It is Jean-Michel Traquenard. Jean-Michel Traquenard. Traquenard! 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 Enough! What can I do for you, Mademoiselle? Uh... Drew. Nancy Drew. I've just started working for Manette, as an assistant. Oh? What uh, happened to Ezer? Ezer? Ezer! Ezer Miki! Ezer Miki! Hmm? Oh, Heather McKay! No, Heather still works for Manette. I'm kind of working for both of them. Our Lady of the Mask has fired three assistants in the past five months. <laughs> I hope you are not next. In fact, that Ezer has managed to avoid the axe for this long is uh, truly remarkable. Here, I'm supposed to give these photos to you. They came straight from Dieter von Schwesterkrank's darkroom. I printed them up myself. You are quite doué as a photo developer. Bravo for you, Nancy Drew. Merci. I was afraid Ezer had forgotten. So, you had the pleasure of meeting Herr von Schwesterkrank, eh? He seemed very nice. Dieter is a very uh, enterprising young man, which in most cases is good, but when arrogance enters the picture, pfft. So, do you, like Ezer, hope to leave your mark on the world of couture? Would it be bad if I said yes? In the world of couture, a single creation won by someone famous to a high-profile event? Such a dress can be worth a fortune in publicity, which makes it a desperately competitive world. A dog-eat-dog -dog world. A world where bad things can and do happen to good people. You must order something. I insist. La carte, s'il vous plaît. Oh, but I'm really not hungry. Mademoiselle. Thank you. I mean, merci. Order anything you want. Everything here is superb. And Henri, he is the best waiter in all of France. Well, in that case... The croque monsieur sounds good. Très bien. Merci, Henri. Ajoutez le mon édition, s'il vous plaît. Certainement. Ah! Ham and cheese grilled on a baguette. One of my favorites. 
Yum. Mm. Mm. I'm glad I ordered that. It was great. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle. So, what else do you wish from me? Do you have any idea why Minette wears that mask? I believe she is the victim of botched plastic surgery. Do you have proof? No, but I tell you this, Nancy. Some women with noses that would put birds of prey to shame are perfectly content with their appearance, while others with acceptable features are convinced they are more hideous than Frankenstein. Self-image. It can make people do strange things. If you had to name Minette's worst enemy, who would that be? Ugo Batelli, without a doubt. Not only do he and Minette have similar design styles, so that they are constantly competing for the same coup de terre clients, but both of them are unthinking, socially inept egoists. It is a rare week that goes by without one of them insulting the other. Has it ever gone beyond words? Not to my knowledge. You ask very curious questions, Mademoiselle Drew. They make me think you know more than you are saying. And as a member of the press, I'm not sure that I like that. Do you have a real office somewhere? When I'm writing my column, I go to my office at Glam Glam. When I'm researching my column, I come here. I have my telephone, which can do everything save sing the Marseillaise, good food, and a chair for whomever stops by. How can I contact this Hugo Butterly person? His phone number is right here in my digital assistant. Of course, it's extremely unlikely that you will be able to talk to him in person. Even I occasionally have trouble penetrating the wall of sycophants that surrounds him. So, what else do you wish from me? I'm staying with JJ Ling, the model. Do you know her? But of course. I know everyone who is anyone when it comes to fashion. And Gigi, she is a breath of fresh air. But what about JJ Ling? You mean Gigi Ling? No, I mean JJ. Gigi. JJ. En français, you pronounce G like J and J like G. She may very well be JJ in America, but in France, she is Gigi. How well does she get along with Manette? From what I hear, very well. Which is surprising when you consider all things. I assume she told you how she was tricked into a current contract with Minette. Yes, terrible thing being tricked like that. Of course, it was Gigi's agent to misled her, not Minette. Nevertheless, Gigi seemed very upset when I talked to her. She does not wish to be stuck in Paris for so long. Eh, the perils of being a model, eh? Thank you for talking to me. A tout à l'heure. You're back. I'm really bored. Let's play hangman. You know how to play, right? Hangman? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Great. Okay, I'll think of a six-letter word and you try to guess what it is. Ready? Ready. O. Bingo. E. You lose. D. Afraid not. M. Wrong. N. Incorrect. S. Bingo. R. Correct. T. Right you are. F. Correct. Y. You won. Play again? No thanks. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. See you later. See ya. Bonjour, Minette's House of Design. Bonjour, est-ce que c'est Heather? This is Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. Oh my, that name is familiar. But for the life of me, I cannot remember why. Nancy Drew. This is going to drive me mad. Can you 
tell me what this is regarding? All I want is for someone there to tell me how the ensemble I'm paying Manette's design for me is coming along. Which is almost upon us, you know. I'm getting a tad antsy. I understand. And your name is? Prudence Rutherford. Prudence Rutherford? Oh, good heavens, yes, of course. Nancy Drew. Why, as I understand it, it was largely because of your investigatory prowess that my real necklace was recovered soon thereafter. What on earth is a nascent detective like you doing answering the telephone for Minette? Get down from there. Excuse me, dear. Nancy, tell her the designs are done and will be shipped to her by the end of the week. Then go to the work table and finish them. You want me to finish them? The instructions are all right there. Piece of cake. Why my husband insists on sitting here in my study in his soggy tennis talks when he has the run of the whole villa is beyond me. Oh dear, thanks to that scallywag, I've quite forgotten what we were talking about. I was just about to tell you that I'm working for Manette because I'm interested in fashion design. Fashion design? You? Yes. See, the more I learned about the way ancient Maya dressed, the more interested I became in how modern people dress. That's just silly, dear. Yes, well, in any case, we'll be sending you the finished designs for the ensemble very shortly. Wonderful! I'm sure they're going to knock my socks off and blow me away, as you young people like to say. Lucille, get the deodorizer, please. Philip's been in here again, I'm afraid. Goodbye, dear. Or shall I say, à tout à l'heure. <laughs> Are the designs I'm supposed to finish for Prudence Rutherford under here? You got it. First thing I need to do is flip up this plastic sheet. Excellent. Well, that's that. All three outfits are ready for you to send to Prudence. Excellent. Heather, where is JJ? I told you, she's not answering her phone. Nancy? It seems that Manette has finally thought up all the designs she needs for her spring collection. But instead of putting them down on paper, like a normal designer, she insists on creating them on a live model. Hence her sudden, desperate need for JJ. Say no more. I'll go get her. Heather, I don't want excuses. I want JJ now. Go like the wind. Bonjour, mademoiselle. As you can see, you have many new things to choose from. 
What intrigues you? Well, let's see. What's in here? If you are cooking and you run out of an ingredient, that book tells you what you can use in its place. So if you must cook, you must have that book. Fortunately, I charge only eight euro. I'll give you two euros. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour. I have many new things, you see? Wow, you sure do. You are sure to find something you like. Is this mint? Oui, that is mint. The growers of mint because of them all over Paris, all over France. No mint except for here. I have very good mint, not moldy. I sell to you for 50 euros. 18 euros, that's all I'll pay. No one has mint but me. You want mint, you must pay 50 euros. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Hey, Rumi, how's it going? Minette needs you at her studio. In fact, she's been screaming for you, literally. Too bad. I'm not going anywhere until these mint chocolate chip cookies are finished. But if I go back there without you, Minette will fire me. Too bad. Silly me, I just said that, didn't I? Look, go to the studio. I'll finish those for you, okay? I'll do a great job, I promise. Well, I'll head over there. But I'm gonna call you before I set one foot inside Minette's studio. And if those aren't done, or if you try to lie... I never lie. Ask anyone. Well, all right. Everything you need is right here. Recipe, baking sheet, mixing bowl, measuring cups and spoons, ingredients, and if you mess up and want to start over, just turn around and dump it down the sink. One problem, though. The recipe calls for fresh mint. Only I had to toss the sprig I had because it was moldy. So you're going to have to go out and find some more. Which could be hard because there's some kind of mint shortage thing going on. Oh, and I'm also out of brown sugar. I think there's a way to substitute for it using molasses somehow, but that's your problem now. Remember, I'm going to call you when I get to Minette's. If those cookies aren't done, I'm going to go shopping instead. And Minette's going to go bonkers. Ta-ta! What are books doing in here? What in the world is JJ doing with books on electrical engineering? Well, here's some molasses. First thing I should do is get out that mint and chop it up. I'll just chop up this mint. There, I'm ready to start cooking.
They look okay to me. Hello? Well, are they done? They sure are. Describe them. Describe them? Describe them. I've made them before, so I'll know you're lying if you fail to mention the one thing that makes them different from other cookies. Well... They're very... round? Wrong. Unless you want... Oops, wrong utensil. Must be the mint that makes their edges turn up like that. I'll just cool the cookies off on this rack and I'll be all done. Hello? Well, are they done? They sure are. Describe them. Well, their edges curl upwards? Bingo! Nice going. Because of you, Minette is about to become a very happy camper. Bonjour. No, oh, Nancy. George, go get on the other line, quick. It's Nancy. And remember, talk fast. She's calling all the way from France. So where are you? What have you seen? How do you like Paris? What's Minette like? Have you learned how to design clothes? Bess, slow down. You don't have to talk fast, okay? My dad bought me a phone card and told me to make as many calls as I want. Oh, great. Hi, Nance. What's going on? How's Paris? Have you seen the Louvre? What about the Eiffel Tower? How many famous people? George, have you met? three words. Prepaid phone card. Oh. Great! Hey, perfect timing. We were just about to go for a run. Whoa, wait a minute. A run? Jog. I meant jog. But you said run. I meant jog. You know how I feel about the R word, George. Jog. We're going for a jog, Bess. Honest. So, Nance, tell us about Minette. Well, she's very... high-strung. Why do you say that? Well, the first time I walked into her office, I was almost decapitated by the potted plant she'd just thrown. She threw a potted plant at you? Before she even knew you? That was rude. Actually, she was throwing it at Heather, her assistant. Oh, and Bess, according to Minette, when something is cool, she says it's totally rude. Rude? You know, that's got a ring to it. He is one rude dude. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna start saying that. Have you ever heard of a fashion photographer named Dieter von Schwesterkrank? No, but I'll bet he's young, German, and cute. Why do you say that? Because I have a sixth sense about these things. Go ahead, Nancy. Describe him in all his luscious Teutonic detail. Well, he's young, German, and cute. See? Why do you ask, Nan? He used to date Minette, only she broke it off with him. How come? I got the feeling that he didn't know. I also got the feeling that he still cares for Minette. A lot. She's just so darn weird, it's hard to understand what he sees in her. Maybe he's just as weird as she is. Yeah, maybe he wears a mask too. Only he wears his on the inside. Oh, Bess. 
I had to deliver some prints to this fashion editor named Jean-Michel Traconard. What's he like? Bald, heavy set, and approaching middle age. That's right, Bess. How'd you know? I told you, I have a sixth sense about these things. More likely it has something to do with all those fashion magazines you're constantly reading. I hardly ever read fashion magazines. Do you ever read Glam Glam? Ooh, I love Glam Glam. Well, that's the one he writes for. See? You probably saw his picture in there once and filed it away in your subconscious. Oh. How come my subconscious never seems to file away anything practical? Anyway, when it comes to the Paris fashion scene, this Traconard guy pretty much knows everything and everyone. So he's pretty helpful? Uh, mostly he's pretty arrogant. Well, anybody who does business out of a cafe can't be all bad. He does business out of a cafe? Yeah, Nancy just said that, didn't you? Uh, no. Your subconscious strikes again. Dang, am I good or what? Someone has been sending Minette threatening letters. You mean someone's been threatening her life? Well, not in so many words. I've only seen one of the letters she's gotten, and it was just kind of vaguely threatening. The end is near, that sort of thing. Do you think the threats are what's causing Minette to act so bizarrely? Or is her bizarre behavior the reason why she's been getting threats? Good questions, and there's only one way to answer them. Find out who sent those letters. Just be careful, Nancy, or you might start getting threatening letters. You should see how cool, calm, and collected Minette's assistant Heather is, even when Minette is totally wigging out. I don't get it. I mean, how could anyone work for a woman who goes around wearing a mask all the time? Apparently, Minette has fired three other assistants in the past five months alone. Sounds like Heather is quite the survivor. Or maybe she's the reason the others didn't survive. Ooh, good point. Don't turn your back on her, Nan. She may end up sticking a knife in it. I told you guys before I left that I'd be rooming with Jing Jing Ling, right? You mean, you really are? Yes. We thought you were kidding. What's she like? Well... She's very nice, down-to-earth, bubbly, outgoing, just a regular person. Wait a minute. I'm all those things. How come I'm not a famous model? Well, let's see. I was kidding, George. It seems that Manette's biggest rival is a fashion designer named Hugo Butterly. You think he's the one who's been sending Manette those threats? I think it's possible. I love his stuff. I can't afford it, of course, but I tried a Butterly on once, and I gotta tell you guys, I look très gorgeous. Well, I'll let you guys go. Have fun. Amusez-vous bien. Show off. Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? As in Drew? I thought you were in France. I am in France. Frank! Pick up the phone down there! It's Nancy Drew calling from France! Everything okay? Everything's great. <sighs> hey, Nancy. Break from what? Carrying furniture upstairs. Carpet layers are coming to redo the basement tomorrow, so we gotta get everything out. And I use the term we loosely. Hey, I'm pacing myself here. You're in the kitchen eating jelly donuts, aren't you? Not anymore. Well, I made it to Paris, okay? Great. Exactly where are you? Right now, I'm in the Latin Quarter. Wait a minute. I thought you were in France, not Central America. She's in the Latin Quarter of Paris, Joe, not Latin America. They call it the Latin Quarter because it's where the Sorbonne University is. And until 1793, Latin was the area's official language. Oh. What are you doing there? I'm in the apartment Amy Grunhild arranged for me. In fact, did I tell you who my roommate is? Is it somebody we know? Jing Jing Ling. Jing Jing Ling? The model? You're rooming with JJ Ling, the famous Australian model? Yep. B put her on. Joe, just calm down. I'm calm. I'm very calm. I'm completely calm. I just want to say hi, that's all. Put her on. I can't put her on, Joe. She's not here. Sorry. Oh. Think maybe you could put her on later? Maybe later, yeah. Sweet. I finally met Minette. So what's she like? Very temperamental. It's like working around dynamite. One false move and she goes off. And I mean, she goes off. Is she talented? I guess so. She's in the process of designing a dress for the First Lady. 
Of the United States? That's pretty cool. Unless something goes wrong and Minette loses it. If that happens, it could turn into an international incident. Minette's studio is something else. Before you left, you mentioned it was an old windmill or something? Right. It's in an old moulin. That's French for windmill. Like that cabaret a Moulin Rouge. Exactly. And like the Moulin Rouge, Minette's windmill is in a section of Paris called Montmartre. The outer office looks like any other modern office, but Minette's studio, which is inside the Moulin itself, is very old and funky. How long has she been there? Only about a year or so. Long enough for her to throw paint all over the wall in a fit of anger. She throws paint? Among other things. Yikes. Parts of Paris are real quaint, like you can buy stuff from these vendors in the park. But if you want to get a good deal, you have to haggle with them. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a pain. Oh, Frank, where's your spirit of free enterprise? What kind of stuff do they have, Nancy? Everything imaginable. It's like a garage sale, only in a park. I love garage sales. I hate garage sales. Plus, their inventory is always changing, so people keep going back to them just to see what new stuff they have. I wish haggling was common in this country. There's nothing better than feeling like you've gotten yourself a really good deal on something. And when somebody rips you off? Nobody rips me off, Frank. Okay, except for that bogus concert ticket I bought from Gerald the budding juvenile delinquent Higginbotham in junior high school. But I was young then, very young. I'll let you go. Au revoir. Au riv... Au riv... Ditto! Minette's House of Design. I need to speak to Minette. I'm sorry, but she's unavailable. Just get her on the phone. She is unavailable. Get her on the phone now. Who is this? Are you going to connect me with Minette or not? I'll see what I can do. Cool. Hold still, please. I'm trying. I'm sorry, she's busy. May I take a message? Hello? Hello? Hmm. Guess he hung up.
letters on this one look different than the letters on the others. historian was calling about. Why would Dieter be carrying this around? Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. Is this parrot very expensive? The price is very reasonable. 20 euro. I'm willing to pay 15 euros for it. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. me to do just go in there and put them back in the box they came in carefully don't kill any of them nothing good ever comes from killing things don't worry I'll get them out of there for you bless you Yuck. that must be the box they came in historian who called me for. Maybe she can help me figure out why Dita was carrying that obituary around. Oh, these guys... My gosh! The letters in these fonts look exactly like the ones that were used in one of those threatening notes Manette got. Which means Heather must have said it. Gotcha! Say good night, Tracy. Play time's over, little guy. Poor girl. Buggy, buggy, buggy.
There, that has got to be the last bug. You can open the door now, Manette. Did you get all of the bugs? Yes, Manette. How many are there? I don't know, nine. Are they all alive? Yes, Manette. Are you sure you didn't kill any? Positive. And they're all in the box? Yes. Okay, listen. I want you to take that box to the park and let those things go. Only I don't want to be here when you come out. Probably the only thing those twisted little vermin are thinking about right now is revenge. Manette, they're cockroaches. Exactly! So I want you to count to ten, and then, and only then, are you to come out of there, all right? Anything you say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What a nut job. Modern European history, Lynn Manrique. Hello, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Paris. Actually, I talked to you earlier when you tried to call Manette. She's finally calling me back? Wonderful. Please, put her on. Uh, I'd like to, but I'm afraid she's still too busy to talk to you. Oh. But if you don't mind, could I ask you a couple of questions about Noisette Tournade? Certainly. How long did she live in the Moulin, where Manette now has her studio? She lived there for 55 years, from 1949 to 2004. She sold it when she moved to Provence, which is where she passed away. She never married, you know. Very private person. She served as Paris's director of public works for more than 20 years, yet not one person has been able to tell me what her favorite color was. What did she do during the war? From 1942 until the liberation of Paris, Noisette worked as a translator for the Germans by day and an encoder for the French resistance by night. This, as you might imagine, made everyone suspicious of her, both French and Germans alike. And after the war, things got ugly. Especially when people found out she was romantically involved with a German soldier. His name was Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. You're kidding me. What happened to him? Hans left Paris right after the war and never returned, leaving Noisette to fend for herself. She was tried as a collaborator in 1946 and acquitted, but the experience left her quite bitter. You see, some people said that during the war she took various pieces of artwork, mostly from churches, and stashed them away somewhere so they wouldn't fall into enemy hands. That sounds pretty heroic to me. Well, some people said she stole them for herself. And unfortunately, the artwork remains lost to this day. No one knows exactly what Noisette took, or if indeed she took anything. In any case, Noisette was terribly hurt that the city she loved had turned on her like that. After her trial, she told the press that the truth of what she'd done during the war resided in her and in the person and place she loved the most. And that was that. She never spoke of her wartime activities again. I assume that the person she was referring to was Hans von Schwesterkrank, who passed away a year or two ago, and that the place was her beloved Moulin, which is why I'm hoping Manette will allow me to visit it. Now, I've got a question for you. In the hours before she died, Noisette was said to have constantly muttered three words. Red left green. Is there anything inside the Mulan that has to do with red left green? Anything at all? No, but I'll keep that in mind and let you know if I see something. I'd appreciate it. Any other questions? What was the French resistance? That was the name given to the various groups of men and women who did their best to undermine Germany's military occupation of France during World War II. Some would engage in strikes and sabotage, while others would collect and pass intelligence along to the Allies. Needless to say, their operations were highly covert and very dangerous. What else can you tell me about the German occupation of Paris? The German army entered Paris on June 14, 1940, 
And after France formally surrendered on June 22nd, the Germans controlled the city. They took whatever they wanted, food, supplies, houses, artwork, and dictated how Parisians were to live their lives. Naturally, their presence was deeply resented. Some people ignored the situation as best they could. Some collaborated with the Germans, while others, like those in the resistance, fought back until the city was finally liberated on August 25th, 1944. What's the story behind the Cross of Lorraine? The vertical bar crossed by two horizontal bars is an emblem that was first used by Joan of Arc, as well as the Dukes of Lorraine in the 15th century. But during and after World War II, it became a symbol of the French resistance. Nowadays, it's not unusual to see it on statues or monuments commemorating the period in French history from 1940 to 1945. After the war, when she was the director of public works, what kind of things did Moisette do? She oversaw many of the services which the citizens of Paris enjoyed every day. Streets, bridges, parks, their maintenance all came under Noisette's purview. She particularly enjoyed putting various forms of art on permanent display in various public places, especially parks. What did you mean when you said Moisette was tried as a collaborator? Collaborators were French citizens who not only failed to resist the occupation, but actually helped the Germans keep it going. Because Noisette had worked for the Germans as a translator and had a German boyfriend, after the war, many of her countrymen automatically accused her of collaboration. When it was revealed that she had been a member of the resistance, instead of exonerating her, that just made some people think she'd been spying for the Germans, too. As I said before, it was an ugly time, one which poor Noisette spent the rest of her life trying to forget. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. It was nothing. Goodbye. Someone's in the dark room. Mr. von Schwesterkrank? Are you in there? Who's there? Nancy Drew. I just wanted to ask you some questions. I'm very busy. You'll have to come back. I just wondered what you were doing in Square du Vert Galant Park. I, uh, I was just taking a walk. You dropped an obituary about Noisette Tournade. Shall I leave it for you? There's no need. I don't want it. Why were you carrying it around? Because I, uh, I was going to send it to my grandmother. I thought she knew the woman. Turns out she didn't. You also dropped some kind of trinket. Looks like a miniature clock. That's something my great-uncle Hans gave me. It's actually a key. It opens the panel over there to the right of the bookshelf. He lived here during the war. The place has been in the family ever since. What's behind the panel? Go ahead and see for yourself. Just be prepared to go a little cuckoo. Mr. von Schwesterkrank, believe it or not, that key your uncle gave you opened up some kind of passageway. Is it okay if I see where it goes? A passageway? He never said anything about a passageway. Go ahead and explore it all you want. Just be careful. This building is very old. Hmm, wonder if his name is Boris. that symbol means the year when our despair ended the year when my despair began
wonder what that thing is. Hmm. Huh. Those dials remind me of the stone discs in Minette's studio. The ones she got paint all over. Hey guys, end of the line. You are out of here. Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. That looks just like the picture that was in Noisette's code book. How much is this? I have been told that it is probably a decoder used by those who resisted the German occupation of World War II. Really? How much do you want for it? Nothing. It is not for sale. It is a piece of history. I have it only as an eye catcher. But you're a businessman. You must be willing to part with it for something. Uh, I will trade you one piece of history for another. You give me a battle of Mouton Fouette, 1968. And I give you the decoder. Deal. What's Mouton Fouette? Mouton Fouette 1968 is a very rare beverage that is usually stored underground. Unfortunately, finding an intact bottle has become next to impossible. But if you want the decoder, the impossible is what you must do. So, give me a bottle of Mouton Fouette 1968. I will accept nothing less. In the meantime, what else tickles the fancy? What's this book about? That is a very good book about codes which are commonly used. It is a mere 15 euro. I can give you 4 euros for it. Vendu! What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. You will ask to return. I have many new things. You see? Yes, you do. I could use a French-English dictionary. How much? This is the best French-English dictionary you can buy in all of Paris. Not too big, simple to use, hundreds and hundreds of words. I practically give it to you for 30 euro. How about 23 euros? It is yours. What else appeals to you? Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. No, this isn't Jingjing. Jing. I'm just calling from her phone. From her phone? So, you know Jingjing? Jing. Are you her friend? Well, yeah, I guess. You are the most lucky person in the world. I am a big fan of Jingjing. Jing. I call her house and leave massage. I call Minette because I know she works there, but she will not talk to me. She is too... what is the word? Paranormal? Uh, you mean paranoid? Yes, yes, paranoid. So, if you are not Jingjing, Jing, why do you call me? This is Zhu, right? Yes, yes, I am Zhu. Well, Zhu, my name is Nancy Drew, and I saw a symbol on the wall when I was in an underground passage not too long ago. 
It looked like two leaves with two nut-type things attached to them, and I just wondered if you could tell me what it meant or why it was there. Yes, yes, of course I can. But first, you must have Xing write something for me. Write something for you? You must have her write something that I can keep. Have her write, Zhu, my love, Xing. Then, take the metro to the Danfer Rochereau station, enter the catacombs, find the bones from the Magdalene Cemetery, and put the autograph in the skull below the plaque. Have her write, Zhu, my love, Jing, go to the catacombs, find the Magdalene Cemetery bones, and leave the autograph in a skull. Yes, yes, exactly that. Don't worry about desecrating the person whose bones they may be. The skull, it is a fake. My friend and I put it there. And so, after you deliver it, you call me and I tell you all about the symbol you saw. But what if Jing Jing refuses? Then, Nancy Drew, it seems we will both be very disappointed. the stuffed parrot? Here you go. What's it for, anyway? It's a Minette thing. You wouldn't understand. No one would. Why did you write Minette that threatening letter? What? You think I wrote those letters? I saw the memo you sent Minette about fonts. The letters on it match the letters on one of the threats I found in her dodo box. You opened Minette's dodo box? That's the real reason you didn't want me looking in there, isn't it? Okay. A couple months ago, I got so fed up with her that I... I just had to get back at her somehow. I'd seen how upset those other letters made her, so I sent one of my own, but just that one. And I never intended to really do anything to her. I just wanted her to suffer. You know, emotionally. The way she made you suffer when she started going out with Dieter. You really don't miss a trick, do you? I thought when she dumped him like that that he'd finally come to his senses and realize that I'm the one he should be with. But even now, even after she broke up with him, she still has some kind of weird, sick hold on him. Look, you're not going to tell Minette about this, are you? There's really no need. It'll just upset her all over again. And she's so far behind as it is. And there's no telling how she'd take it out on me, or on you, for that matter, just for telling her. So don't say anything to her, okay? I'm gonna have to think about it. I'll see you later. What? Why do you wear that mask? This mask is a statement, Nancy. It's my way of telling society that it pays far too much attention to the face. I design clothes for the person. I'm telling society forget the face. Look at the person. Look at my creations. The colors, the fabrics, the lines I choose. They are meant to enhance the person, not the face. The person. The face is... inconsequential. You don't really expect anyone to buy that, do you? Whether they buy it or not is their problem. Any more questions? Someone with a German accent called for you when you were fitting JJ, but he didn't leave a message. Oh? He sounded kind of angry. I'm sure it wasn't important, so don't worry about it. What else? There's something that I think you should know about Heather. Oh? What? Oh, it's nothing. Never mind. Any more questions? Do you have any idea who sent you that box of cockroaches? No. Probably just some idiot who has no understanding of how much I have to do, and how long it takes me to do it, and thinks the world revolves around him and what he wants, and can't understand why people don't jump just because he snaps his finger! I mean, probably just some practical joker, that's all. Why did you break up with Dieter? That is absolutely, unequivocally, 100% none of your business! And if you ever ask me anything about Dieter again, you're fired. Now go away and let me work. I already made Minette her tea. Bye. 
Mademoiselle de Roux, what is it now? Do you think I could order something? Order anything you like, but know that this time you will pay for it. No problem. Henri? The Quise de Grenouille. Très bien. Two euros, s'il vous plaît. The price is 12 euros. Money well spent, I hope. Uh-oh, this looks like... Frog legs. A brave but wise choice. They are magnifique. If you say so. Mm. Mm. That was wonderful. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle. So, what else do you wish from me? The picture of Manette that was in the June issue of Glam Glam. Was it cropped, do you remember? Mm, I'm sure it was. Most photographs are these days. Why? Do you think I could see the uncropped picture? As it happens, all the pictures which I use in my articles are stored right here in my digital assistant. I will help you, mademoiselle, but only if you help me first. You see, the owner of this cafe, he faces a crease. The person who makes desserts for him has stepped out for his customary two and a half hour break. Unfortunately, a bus full of American teenagers has pulled up and all are clamoring for parfait. So, I will tell the owner that you will make the parfait, and when you do, he will be indebted to me and will allow me to continue using this table as my office. And I will be indebted to you and will allow you to see the picture. You see how it works? Yeah, I get the picture. Okay. Looks like I've got chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, strawberry ice cream, caramel ice cream, bananas, tapioca balls, berries, and whipped cream. The first one I have to make is an exwa. I did it right. Now they want a long fair. Parfait. I did it right. Next up, a tropical.
c'est ça. He liked it. Now they want a long fair. Merci. Next is a corbeau. One misty coming up. C'est bien. He liked it. Here comes a fantasy. Oui, c'est ça. A Lulu. Oui, c'est ça. I'm getting there. There, all done. The owner, he tells me you did a good job. And so, as was our agreement, here is the picture you wish to see. Great, thank you. So, what else do you wish from me? We'll talk again later, okay? D'accord. Hey, Rumi, how's it going? I just talked to this huge fan of yours. He'd really, really like your autograph. I'm flattered, but unfortunately he's out of luck. Nobody gets my autograph. I'm afraid that someone will use it to forge my name and steal my identity. This guy wouldn't do that. Stuff like that happens to people like me all the time. I'm just not going to take the chance. Want to play hangman? That'd be great. Z. Wrong. You. Wrong. M. Wrong. Y. L. O. You lose. That's a winner. V. E. J. You I lose. N. Right you are. D. Sorry. S. Right you are. A. Right you are. R. That's a winner. C. You won. Play again? Sure.
Z. U. Afraid not. M. Y. Nope. L. O. Sorry. Z. Nope. E. Correct. J. Wrong. I. Oopsie. N. G. And the word was? I wasn't even close. May I have that piece of paper? Sure. Want to play again? Maybe later. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. I'll let you get back to your cookie dough. Ciao, Bella. Un, s'il vous plaît. That's one less coin in my purse. Magdalene. This must be the place Zoo was talking about. And there's a skull. It's Nancy Drew. Did you get the autograph? It is magnifique! You were wise not to try to fool me, Nancy. I know Jing's handwriting better than I know my own. So, here is what I know about that symbol. I call it the hazelnut because to me that is what it looks like. A noisette. Wait a minute. A noisette? Yes, yes. That is French for hazelnut. I have seen it in only one place in the catacombs. To reach this place, return to the catacombs and go to the skull where you left Jing Jing's autograph. Lift the top part of the skull and push the red button. That will open a secret passage that will lead you to the noisette. Great, thank you. But if you go there, you must be careful. The tunnel police, they are one problem. The tunnels, they are another. What do you mean? Some of the tunnels, especially near the Mouton Beverage Company, they are water... water filled with trees. You mean water logged? Ah, yes, yes, water logged. You must swim underwater to reach the place where I saw the noisette. And the water is very cold. You will need a wetsuit. Good luck, Nancy Drew. You will need that too. Did you take all those photos for me? I sure did. They're all right there in your camera. So, you had some questions for me? What do you know about Noisette Tornade? The French resistance fighter? I seem to recall reading that she died recently and that's about it. Why do you ask? I know three things, Mr. Von Schwesterkronk. One, Noisette Tornade, whose obituary you were carrying until it fell out of your pocket in the park. 
Noisette used to own the old windmill Manette now owns. Two, during World War II, she was rumored to have hidden several valuable works of art from the Germans somewhere in Paris. And three, she was romantically involved with a German soldier named Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. Oh, yes. I know all those things, too. Hans was my great uncle. But there are one or two things you don't know, Fräulein. You could not have known that just before he passed away, my great uncle gave me that. What is it? Something Noisette gave to him. Turn it over and look on the back. Unfortunately, my great uncle couldn't remember what any of it meant. She used to be the director of public works, so I went to her favorite park to see if anything there might help me figure out what that card means. But I discovered nothing. You can keep that if you want. I can? Yes, I give up. I don't care anymore. Finding that lost artwork is why you started going out with Minette, isn't it? Since Minette owns the Moulin, where Noisette spent most of her life, I thought dating her would help me figure out what that card meant. But then something totally unexpected and tragic happened. I fell in love with her. Minette is one of the cleverest, most infuriating, yet fascinating women I have ever met. You still feel that way? Even after she broke up with you like that? I can't help myself. I thought that if I found that missing artwork, I would be a hero and Minette would change her mind about me. But I can barely keep my mind on my works these days, let alone on finding some mystical treasure. If you want to look for it, go right ahead. Right now, the only thing I'm interested in recovering is Minette. Ren four one five four. I'll bet those numbers are movable. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? How much are you asking for this steak? That is made of the finest wood, and it can be used for many, many things. It is one of my most popular items. For that reason, I sell for 13 euros. I'll give you 10 euros. Voila! What else do you like? Is this just regular string? That is very good string. Very strong. Very good to have around. You can buy for only 6 euros. How about three euros? Voila! What else do you like? Is this Ichido book any good? That book is very good. If you are around dangerous people, then you must get this book. You pay only 23 euros. Would you take half that, 12 euros? Voila! What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... I could use a flashlight. Mine was in my lost luggage. That is only 10 euro. Battery is included. Would you take 8 euros for it? It is yours. What else appeals to you? Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. 
Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. Is this pie tin very expensive? Very cheap. Fifteen euro. Would you take one euro for it? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? A wetsuit. Not just any wetsuit. It used to belong to a friend of the famous undersea explorer Jacques Cousteau. A friend who is said to have shared many adventures with him. For that reason, I sell it for 125 euro. 31 euros, that's all I'll pay. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. must have jumped on the handle and moved the windmill. Huh. If I had a stake and tied some string to it and hung something that moved and made noise from the string, maybe that squirrel would stay away. flashlight. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Do you still need someone to paint pictures for you? Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. On the wetsuit. Hope it's more comfortable than it looks. Ugh, this place is crawling with four legged vermin. Hope they leave my stuff alone. A rough translation would be, in Europe, near the new bridge, Snow White lives in a red castle. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I have no idea what this is. But after everything I went through to get here, I'm taking it.
book on Ichido is missing. Insupportable. Attends. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a Il y a quelqu'un là. Non, non. Je suis confus. Ouais, comme d'habitude. T'as jamais entendu l'histoire de la bête de Blackmoor Ah oui, ça m'a fait très peur. Ne pas pas de ça. Qui est là S'il vous plaît. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle returns. And she returns with a bottle of Mouton Forte, 1968. Oh la la, you did it. So, I take this. And give you this. Take it. You have earned it. Thanks. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Just me, Nancy. Uh oh. What did you say? Nothing. Everything's fine. You just stay in there and keep working. Looks like this thing is set to go off if she opens the door. I've got to figure out how to disarm this thing before she opens the door. 
What are you doing out there? Nothing. Just stay in there. Everything's fine. <sighs> I'm done. I won't bother you anymore. I promise. I better get rid of this thing before she sees it and really freaks. Rouge blanc, rouge bleu, rouge. Looks like French to me. I'll bet I'm supposed to put these colors in a certain order. what Moisette stole during the war. Stained glass. If you are reading this, it means that I am dead and that you have discovered my secret. Yes, the rumors were correct. With the help of Hans von Schwesterkrank, I took the stained glass you see in front of you and hid it. Not for personal gain, but so these exquisite pieces of art would not be lost to the dangers of war. I was not a traitor, nor was Hans. He helped me because he knew it was the right thing to do. But why, you are asking, why when the war ended did I not return them? Why did I not even admit taking them? At first it was because I was angry. After all that I had done for my country, when my friendship with Hans was discovered, people turned against me and accuse me of terrible things. I wanted to hurt the people of Paris the way they were hurting me, so I said nothing about the stained glass. Then, when at long last I was deemed innocent, my anger subsided, but fear took its place. I was afraid that if I revealed what I had done, the accusations would start up again, and people would once again call me a criminal and question my motives and assail my character and it would have been too much to bear. Hans had gone back to Germany, and despite his promises to the contrary, I knew I would never see him again. Like everyone else, I just wanted to get on with what was left of my life, so again I said nothing. And gradually time passed, and Paris healed, and I healed, yet the right time for telling the world my secret never seemed to come, and now I am director of public works a job I hold not only because I love this city, but because I wanted to make sure that someone, you, would be able to eventually find what I hid. Please make sure these pieces make a safe return to the world above, when you see them as they were meant to be seen, with sunlight streaming through their panes, interrupting the darkness with color and meaning and joy. Only then will you truly understand why I did what I did a lifetime ago. N-T. X-I-V-I-I-I. -I -I. Uh, 
Uh-oh, the door locked behind me, and nobody knows I'm down here. Not good. Well, does the dress work? It does indeed. Yeah, yeah! What about when I whispered? And when I turned my back? Could you hear what I said then? Gonzo, I could hear everything. With this dress, we will be able to hear every word that is spoken within 10 meters of the First Lady. And what we hear, what we sell, will make us the wealthiest spies on the planet. <laughs> hey! Hey! I made you the dress, so how about paying me? After the first lady takes possession, that is our deal. Look, I put up with the dead flowers, the letters, the paint, the idiotic phone calls. I put up with all your stupid threats for months. I deserve to get paid now. Those weren't threats. Those were incentives meant to keep you on track. And they obviously worked. You'll get your money when she gets the dress. Let's go, Gunza. But they're picking it up for her tomorrow. What difference does it make whether you pay me now or 24 hours from now? Oh my gosh! It sounds like Manette made that dress for the First Lady to be some kind of bugging device. I've got to get it out of here and take it to the police. Where did you come from? You've been hiding in here, eavesdropping. You heard everything, didn't you? Not everything, but enough to know that thanks to you, those two guys intend to use this dress to bug the World Summit. I knew there was something sneaky about you the minute you walked into my office. I should have tossed you out on the spot and told Amy Grunhild to stuff it. Well, newsflash, sister. I am about to knock your nosy little block off. Hey! I'm going to pummel you into oblivion, Miss Nosy. Killa! Ho! Killa! You're a good loser, because you are going down. Issa! Issa! Hey! Ho, 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 ho! ho. 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 Oh, so you think you can block me, eh? You're starting to look a little tired there. sha sa He. Kila! Ho! Oh, your goose is cooked! Hee-da! Hey! Issa! Issa! Huh. Shaza! Ho! Oh. Ho! Ha! Ha! Hmm. Arms starting to feel a little weak. Ha! Say! Hey. Where did you learn to block like that? Eat! imaginary elves that were stronger than you. Hee-da! Issa! Issa! Hey! Hooray! Hey! Might as well give up, Minette. You never threw a single punch, yet you beat me. Life is so unfair. And so... horribly... unrude. Where am 
my uh... Oh my gosh. And there it was, the real reason why Minette wore that mask. A tattoo, which she later admitted she had gotten on the spur of the moment and which she instantly regretted, calling it the stupidest thing she'd ever done in her life. She also admitted that the reason she had fallen so far behind schedule was because Ernst and Gunther Schmeck, former members of the East German secret police, were paying her a small fortune to create a dress for the First Lady out of fabric they supplied. This fabric was infused with microscopic circuitry that would allow them to eavesdrop on the world summit. All three have been arrested, which means Minette will probably be designing her next collection from a jail cell. And she doesn't care for stripes. As for the beautiful pieces of stained glass that Noisette Tornade hid away years ago, they have been returned to the churches they came from. And Noisette is finally getting the respect and gratitude she was denied after the war. Not that she was perfect. But it seems to me her biggest fault wasn't doing too little for her beloved city of Paris, but trying to do too much. And as if busting a pair of spies and recovering lost treasure weren't enough, Heather took over Manette's spring show and had me, me, be one of the models. Believe it or not, I managed to make it all the way down the runway and back without falling flat on my face. Of course, I still have no idea what I was wearing, but I can tell you one thing. It was rude. Very rude. Time to dig out the tank top, stock up on sunscreen, and slip on those sandals. Because for my next adventure, I'm off to Hawaii. To the big island, to be exact, where I'll be helping out this quirky entomologist. That's a bug scientist, by the way who has just made a disturbing discovery. In fact, my working vacation quickly turns into a series of disturbing discoveries, including one that involves a legendary monster with a nasty temper and an appetite for revenge. So come with me to this island paradise and help me solve the mystery surrounding the creature of Kapu K. Until then, aloha. Mm-hmm.